Hello, Vibers, and welcome to the Vibe with Kai podcast. It's your boy, Kai. Um, today, we're going to be sp- uh, speaking with transformational life coach and founder of Good Things Are Gonna Come, Jasmine Rice. We'll be talking specifically today about dating yourself first. I love this topic. When when it was brought up, I was like, oh, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. This is like a, definitely a topic that everybody, uh, all of the Vibers I know out there are, are really happy to to, to have this conversation, to be talking about this. So we're going to go into detail about that. Uh, but before we get into our guest, uh, don't forget that if you are a fan of this podcast, you can get even more exclusive content on the Vibe with Kai Patreon, especially if you're having, if you're into having insightful discussions surrounding mental health, mental wellness, good vibes, positive energy. Simply click the link in the description of this podcast and subscribe to the Vibe with Kai on Patreon. It's only $1 per month. That's it. For $1 per month, you get exclusive access to my favorite interviews with some uh, mental health professionals and some popular influencers from around the interwebs, plus a sneak peek behind the scenes look at my life and all the craziness that comes with my life on a personal level. I post stuff on there that you don't see anywhere else. I post some stuff there because it's my safe space. Uh, so if you're interested in that, just click the link in my um, in the description of this uh, of this episode. $1 a month, that's it. Uh, so enough about me. Let's talk about our special guest today, Jasmine Rice. Uh, is a transformational life coach and founder of Good Things Are Gonna Come, an innovative coaching business and supportive community dedicated to empowering individuals to transform and thrive who are on, uh, undergoing life transitions, be it divorce, career change, job loss, empty nest syndrome, like my mom did when I went to college, <laughs> or any other significant life change. As someone who has personally navigated the difficulty of transforming one's life after experiencing a divorce or job loss, Jasmine brings to the table a wealth of knowledge and expertise in mindset strategies, coaching techniques, and emotional intelligence, which she is eager to share with her clients. Drawing on the principles of neuro-linguistic programming, Jasmine assists her clients in adopting the thoughts, language, and habits of highly successful individuals to achieve their desired goals, their story of resilience, and healing after divorce has been captured in her best-selling book, which we'll talk about in a little bit, where she offers guidance on how to create a fulfilling and successful life. Ladies and gentlemen, Jasmine Rice. Hi, Jasmine. How are you? Hi, Kai. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. I'm super excited to to, to have you. And I I uh, I I love like the, how this all like came to be. Like you know, from from getting to meet you not too long ago to being able to have like this conversation that we're going to be having today. Like I'm I'm excited for how everything played out. So thank you for taking time out of your day to sit and chat. Super happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, we were talking. Uh, uh, we were talking last time about, uh, and you were kind of alluding to this as well when we were uh, before we went uh, recorded here that you live in in the Denver area. Am I correct? Right, you live in the Denver area, and I spent some time in the Denver area, and you're preparing for a big storm right now that's coming through. And fun fact, um, the last time I was in Denver, this was December of last year. I um, I guess there was a big storm coming then as well. And I was there and my flight t- was like one of the last flights to take out of the Denver airport that day because a storm was a brewing. A storm was like right there and they had the de-ice our plane. It was, it was awful. I really thought I was going to be stuck in Denver for like another day, but I wasn't. But I like Denver. Denver is very nice. It, it is beautiful. We always get these spring storms. You, you never know when they're going to pop up. So they're saying anywhere from one inch to a foot. So I guess we'll see tomorrow. I feel like that's a wide range. Like I feel like it's going to, it's like, you're either going to be, you know, uh, it's either going to be no snow at all, or you're going to be stuck in the snow for the rest of your life. Like, I feel like that's like a wide range. (laughs) They're just, they're just covering all their bases. I think I see. (laughs) you can't be wrong. If you just have all the, all the answers to just go with all of all the the above. Um, No, I'm, I'm really excited um, uh, to be speaking with you um, and and about all of this. So uh, I want to dive right into this because I love this topic that, that we chose here. The topic is date yourself first. So uh, you pitched this to me. I was like, absolutely. Let's talk about it. So let's start there. When you say date yourself first, what do you mean? Well, I'm going to blow your mind right now. (laughs) So you are the one and only person that is going to be in your life forever. So when you think about that for a minute, you would want to have a really great relationship with yourself since you are going to be with you. You can't escape yourself. So 
I believe that we should really get to know ourselves and spend a lot of our time with ourselves. And this is not just if you are single and you're looking to get into a relationship. If you're in a committed relationship, I still believe you need to take that time to date yourself and focus on yourself as well. Why do you feel that so many people might be afraid to do that, right? Because I feel like that goes without saying, like, you got to love yourself before you do anything. You got to date yourself before you go out. But like, it, it feels like, and I, I can say this from personal experience that like, we just don't have that mindset. Sometimes we, we, I guess we tend to put others, you know, ahead of us sometimes, you know, and, and we don't put ourselves in the same light as, as we, you know, put other people when we're trying to help them. Why do you feel people kind of avoid that aspect of, of dating themselves before dating other people? Well, I think people can view self-care as being selfish because mm. they're putting themselves above other relationships that they have in their lives. And we get so consumed with those other relationships that we have in our lives. Mm. Often we forget about ourselves. And so we focus on those, putting ourselves on the back burner. And when we're not investing into ourselves, we're not good in really any relationship. We're not our best selves for ourselves. We're not our best selves for our partners or if you have children or your coworkers. So taking that time can feel very selfish when you have a lot of other relationships that you're investing your time into. Right. Right. Did you, did you find that you learned that uh, for, like from, from a personal level, did you find that you learned that just from personal experience or just kind of like just watching other people go through it? Like, how did you, like, I guess, come, come along with this mindset of how important this is? Well, I, I went through a divorce um, mm -hmm. and my life really changed. And I, I was viewing the world very, very differently during that process and after that process. And, and I'm an empath and I tend to mm -hmm. often put people in front of me, their feelings and their thoughts. I was really bad about enforcing my boundaries several mm -hmm. years ago, especially when I was married. And um, I was very codependent in my relationship. I really mm -hmm. didn't focus on myself and really get to know myself. I was with my ex-husband from the time I was 17. And so wow. I really didn't know those things. And so going through that challenging transition in my life, I was able to really find myself and focus on myself. And I realized how important that is forever ongoing. It's not just when you're overcoming something that's challenging, but when you're moving forward in relationships, taking that time out for yourself is so important and fun. Right. Yeah, it is fun. And um, I'm actually kind of glad that you brought up uh, this one thing, because this is one of the things I wanted to chat with you about. And that is, uh, like, I guess, the codependency side of things, where do you find that people are often looking towards other sources for their happiness, as opposed to looking within themselves? And if so, what are the pros and cons of, of going about life that way? As humans, we have an innate need to connect with others. We just, it's just in us. From the relationships that we have with our families to the friends, making those connections at work, it's important. But when you're not putting yourself first, at least some of that time, then you're going to run into this situation that I did, that I ran into, when you're, those people's feelings are more important than yours. And that was self-discovery for me when I went through that. And many of my clients have that as well. You get connected, you get comfortable, and there's a fear of when that's gone or you're not investing into someone else. Um, how are you going to go about that? How are you going to navigate that? And um, codependency happens often in relationships. And I don't think it's always necessarily a bad thing. I think yeah. that word gets a lot of um, really bad press, but um, I think there's there's a balance to that as well when you're in really any relationship. Right. What do you think people struggle with the most when it comes to codependency? You know, being able to to really, you know, I guess rely on what's within them to to I guess find fulfillment within their lives. Why why do you think people struggle with that so much? Like, what what is so hard about it? Because it, once again, it feels like it goes without saying, but like we struggle with this every single day. Is it because we're empaths? Like, is it because like we're just humans and we just want to see other people be happy? We also look to other people to make us happy. Yeah. And really, we are the only ones that can truly make ourselves happy. So mm -hmm. we're forming those relationships. And if you're looking for happiness within those relationships, now I 100% believe that your relationships should enhance your happiness. But mm -hmm. if you are looking to relationships with your friends or your family or your partner, 
to make you happy, that's really up to you. You're the only one that has control over that happiness. Right, right, right. So let's talk about like the benefits of 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 dating yourself, right? Dating yourself first. What are some just basic, you know, pers- personality 101 or human being 101 benefits to, to dating yourself first? When you're prioritizing your own needs and your own interests and doing things that you like that make you feel fulfilled, you're going to feel more satisfied at the end of the day. And you're going to get to discover yourself more and maybe get to know yourself in a way that you've really never known yourself, especially in in my situation. You being 17 with someone, we started having the exact same interests. And then after the divorce happened, I realized, wait, I don't really like to do that. Or I really Mm -hmm. prefer going on a beach vacation versus this type of vacation. So you really get to know yourself at a deeper level. And when I'm talking about dating yourself first, I'm not talking about just general self-care. I believe Mm -hmm. that we should practice self-care on a daily basis. That could be doing five minutes of meditation, that could mean taking deep breaths or taking, you know, exercising, whatever that is for you. When I'm talking about dating yourself, it's something a little bit different. If you think of when you went on a date with maybe like a, a, a girl in high school, you probably didn't go on the exact same date every weekend. And so if you're doing the exact same thing with yourself every week, that's not really dating yourself. I'm that's quite about- bold of you. Quite bold of you to think that I had uh, dates in high school. Uh, that's quite, <laughs> quite bold of you. <laughs> Well, well, anyone listening, I suppose I could say so, but but I would doubt that that you didn't have some case. <laughs> I was a nerd. I was very much a nerd. Very, very much a nerd. I found I found somebody that liked nerds, but it was few and far between. Nerds get dates too, you know, they do. <laughs> nerds are cool nowadays. I mean, like yes. in 2023, nerds are cool, but like 2004, me, like literal 1998 nerd me listening to Celine Dion walking home from school got no dates none (laughs) um so one of the things that you had brought up that i I find really interesting because like usually when people bring up okay you need to date yourself first like a a lot of times people are thinking about okay when you're single you know you need to date yourself first and like we'll get into that but one of the things that you brought up just now that i that i find fascinating is that you are also putting an emphasis on dating yourself even when you are in a relationship like you were you know talking about how you discover things you know after um, you know, you, you, uh, went through your divorce and you're like, oh, I, you're like discovering new things about yourself. How does one go about dating themselves when they are in a fully committed relationship in a way that helps the relationship? I have a chapter in my book that's about relationships and I break it into three different parts and the relationship with your friends Uh, romantic relationships, and then the relationship with yourself and families kind of grouped in there with friends. But when you're going out with it with your friends, for example, you're in a relationship like a romantic relationship with someone, most people usually still find some time to go out with their friends and do the type of activities. It's the same concept. It's just the friends aren't there. So Mm -hmm. I believe you should still have those interactions with your friends and you should have interactions with your partner, but then scheduling that time to have that private interaction with yourself. And I think that what that's going to do, again, it's going to allow you to learn more about what's important to you. Um, It helps you set healthy boundaries for yourself and really enforce those in all relationships across the board. Right. I, I'm curious. I'm curious your thoughts on this one thing because I've had, I had this conversation with a couple different people, and I'm really curious your thoughts given like your your insight and your expertise here. Um, there's a lot of couples nowadays that will even sleep in separate rooms, right? Like they're together and they're happily they're happily together, whatever it may be, but they will sleep in in separate rooms so that I guess each person can have like their own space, you know, to themselves. What are your What are your thoughts on that? So my thoughts are there's no one size fits all approach to anything. Mm -hmm. If that works for some people and it's a very healthy relationship and there's communication, I think that's key in all relationships, every relationship, there needs to be healthy communication. And if that works for some people, I think that's great. I think of um, sex in the city, actually, when you say of that, because when uh, Carrie and Big had their set. She kept her apartment because she wanted to be mm. able to have that place where she could right. still go to. And I think that works for some people. Honestly, now having lived by myself for five years, 
it kind of appeals to me <laughs> in <laughs> my next fair. relationship, you yeah. know, having a little bit of my own space. But mm -hmm. I think there's really no one size fits all approach to anything in life. And that includes what works for you in a relationship. And if you yeah. are having healthy communication and you want to have separate bedrooms or even separate places, um, having that alone time is very, very important. And if that's the way a couple chooses to go about it and it's, it's healthy for them, I say go for it. Right, right. And so it all comes down to just the communication between the the, the two people there, because, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've heard both like sides of it, you know, you know, some people saying that, you know, it's a healthy thing to have like that space. And some people saying, no, I need to, we need to be able to make sure that we connect at the, you know, at the end of the night or whatever it may be, we have that one piece of connection. Um, and, and I always found that really interesting. So I always love asking that question, because I'm I'm curious what, like what your your thoughts are and I, I think your thoughts on it are generally what i think as well just it just comes down to communication like let's just talk talk and tell each other how we, how each other feels uh about that kind of thing um i read an article yeah. recently that actually was talking about the amount of time you should spend together as a, a rom romantic couple and i i cannot remember where it was it was a couple of months ago but it was a 70 30 rule is how they wrote it and they said 70 percent of your time is a couple and then 30 percent of your time should be with friends or yourself or your children or other relationships and i, I thought that was very interesting i would love to read that i would love to i would i would love to find some information about that because i, I i'm a mega mega introvert like i, I post about it all the time on my social media platforms about how much of an introvert I am. And um, I know that whenever I am in a relationship, I have to be with somebody that understands how I recharge my battery, right? Because if I'm unable to recharge my battery, I'm not a good boyfriend. I'm not, I'm just, I'm just not, I feel, um, I guess, uh, restricted. I feel uh, um, like claustrophobic, you know, like I feel like just like compressed in a way. And um, and I've been with I, I was with somebody that that didn't allow me to kind of like recharge. And and I used to blame myself all the time. And and like not that not that it was really anybody's fault, but it's like I I never spoke up. I never was open and honest about, you know, what I needed in that moment. So that actually leads to, to my next question in this regard. So when it comes to dating yourself in 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 a relate when you're in a relationship, how much should be communicated between yourself and your partner when it comes to fulfilling your like filling your own cup? How much information should you be giving over to your partner? A ton. <laughs> it goes back <laughs> to that communication. It's the yeah. over communicate. I honestly mm. believe in that. I um I I was in a relationship when it just there wasn't enough communication. And I, mm. ultimately that's, that's why it had failed is because mm. that communication wasn't there. I never really learned how to communicate my feelings and my thoughts. And mm. now because of the time I have spent dating myself, I am very similar to you. I need that time to recharge yeah. and I won't be in a relationship with someone that can't understand that. And that's one of the things that I, I say up front for me, because it is very, very important for someone to understand what I need for me to fill my cup. And that right. often is just having that alone time by myself um, so I can recharge. Mm -hmm. What What are some common mistakes that you see people make when it comes to dating themselves because because as as a person that you know that works daily with with people and, and helping them in, in this manner are there common mistakes or, or struggles that you see people make when it comes to dating themselves so first of all i try not to use the word mistake in my mm -hmm. vocabulary i like to use learning opportunities <laughs> i like that i like that um, yes mm -hmm. because every everything that we do whether it's good or bad it's a learning opportunity for us yeah. and so I would say the the biggest thing that I see is people really having a hard time disconnecting. And so even if they're out to dinner by themselves, which that's something I really encourage. Um, I, I have a, some tips that I give people on different things to do when you're dating yourself and going out to dinner by yourself can be really scary for somebody. So they'll just grab their phone and then they're scrolling through social media or they're texting somebody that's not really spending that time with yourself. And so disconnecting seems to be the biggest challenge that most people have. It's interesting that you say that because that's something that I do because I, I I travel a lot by myself. I um, I'll take solo vacations. I'll go to dinner. I'll go to the movies by myself. Um, but it's funny that you bring up the cell phone side of it because like I'm like, wait a second. Am I actually alone right now? Because I'll be sitting at dinner. Right. And I'll you know be sitting at the bar or whatever, just having dinner. Um, 
And like, I'll have my phone in my hand. I'll be like scrolling through TikTok or I'll be scrolling through whatever, or answering text messages, whatever it may be. And now you got me thinking, I'm like, am I truly by myself in those moments? Am I actually enjoying that time to me? And right. I'm like, ooh, just because a person's not physically there doesn't mean that they're not like there in a way, right? Is is that what we're is that what we're we're, we're, what we're saying there? Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And and it honestly has has been a challenge for me when I was very first getting out there, um, doing things by myself. I was so uncomfortable in the beginning, and yeah. I found myself grabbing my phone and wanting to look through that. And now I I tell myself if this is a, a Jasmine date, then mm-hmm. it's going to be with me. And if someone calls me, I will put my phone on do not disturb. But if it's mm-hmm. really important, yes, I'm going to take that call. But I right. might take my phone out to take a photo of something that I want to share later on social media mm-hmm. or with a friend. But I really try to disconnect. That's something that I feel just takes that date to the next level. Uh, this is going to be such a dumb question, but I'm going to ask it anyway because for 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 personal for personal uh, uh, queries here. Okay, so let's just say I'm out to dinner by myself. I'm taking myself somewhere classy like TGI Fridays or something, right? And I'm sitting at the bar, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Jasmine told me to not take my phone out. I'm eating. I'm sitting here eating my Cajun chicken pasta and mozzarella sticks. Jasmine told me not to take my phone out. What should I be doing? What like when I'm when we're in those moments by ourselves, should we be like interacting with other people? Like, or should we just be like watching the the TVs at the bar? Should we like what exactly should we be doing to help make this self date a a healthy productive one? I think it's going to evolve over time. So in the beginning, if you're very very new to it, it could be interacting with other people if you're comfortable. It's really whatever makes you comfortable in that moment. But I also encourage you to push yourself a little to get uncomfortable if you're going to see that growth, because we have to get uncomfortable to see growth in life. Mm -hmm. And so in the beginning, it could be having dinner at the bar and you're talking to other people because that's what's making you comfortable. Or if it's somewhere that has TVs and you're watching a game that's on or a a show that's on. I love people watching. And so Mm -hmm. I, um, I actually prefer not to sit at the bar. That's where they'll try to sit me. If I say, you know, there's only one, they'll say, Oh, we can sit you at the bar. Mm -hmm. I like to sit at a table now and I like to people watch. I do. I watch. And I, I think, you know, all of these people have a story that are here tonight and I just kind of um, you know, I don't try to stare at them and make them uncomfortable, right. but, you know, look around and see what's right. what's happening around me and just being right. present in the present moment, listening to the different sounds that you hear, um, different smells that you smell, just trying to be in that moment. And like ground and like grounding yourself in a way, just like once again, like, like you said, being in the present, because one of the things that I know I struggled with is I would always either be dwelling on the past or worried about the future. And I was never living in the present. And that's one of the things that I've like been working on a lot over the last couple of months is like, okay, what am I doing to ground myself? What am I doing to, to live in the present? Um, <laughs> one of my favorite stories to tell about uh, doing solo adventures, I went to um, Universal Studios, Florida, uh, and they have the Wizarding World of Harry Potter there, right? And I'm a huge Potterhead. And so they have the Hogwarts Express train, right? That takes you from one park to the other. And these trains, they don't just have like seats. They have like cabins, right? So I'm there by myself and I'm walking through the line. I'm just chilling and I get to the front and the person's like, okay, how many is in your party? I said, one. And he's like, uh, okay. And he just starts looking around. And I was like, okay. And he's like, okay, go to lane four. I'm like, okay. So I go to lane four and it's me and like this mom, a dad, a son, and their daughter and me. And what I didn't know at the time that like there, it was it was like a cabin, like an enclosed cabin that I would be in. Think of like a like a like a Ferris wheel, like an enclosed cabin kind of thing. So I go onto the train. It's this beautiful, picturesque family that you would find on like a, a, a what do you call it? A, the stock photo and a picture frame at Target, right? It's them and then me. <laughs> like the little kids are like so happy to be looking at all, all the Harry Potter stuff, and I'm like trying to contain my excitement around this family and i felt like they should have just adopted me <laughs> that would be amazing adopted me. Yeah, but it's it's always funny because like little things like that will happen when i'm on like these uh solo adventures and is it normal the reason i bring this up is because like i love doing solo stuff but is it normal for me to also sometimes wish that somebody were there with me to experience these these things 
Absolutely. I, um, I have a friend actually who just had that same question with me. She was somewhere and um, she happened to notice there were a lot of couples at the resort. She went on a, a solo vacation and there were a lot of couples there. And she noticed that she was getting sad because she was seeing these couples and she wasn't in a relationship and she was seeing that. So I think it's absolutely, an, it's a part of that. There's times in our lives when we want to share those experiences. So that's when you can just pull yourself back into that present moment and you can have other opportunities to experience things. Or if you're capturing pictures, you can experience, you can share that experience with someone later on. But yes, it's very, very natural at certain times in our lives to, to feel alone and be lonely about that. But then there are other times if you work on this, if you really work on dating yourself and getting comfortable with it, that there'll be few and far between. So you're going to mm -hmm. feel more comfortable being alone. You're not going to feel lonely when you're alone, but definitely in the beginning, but even certain times I have the same experiences when I'm somewhere, somewhere and I, I wish I was able to share that sunset with someone or, um, um, you know, that other experience. I think it's just, it's very natural. Absolutely. Right. Right. Um, one of the things that you were, that you were mentioning earlier, you were saying how you were uh, having trouble establishing healthy boundaries, right? When you, when you were in a relationship, when you're, when you're able to, to really embrace yourself, how does that help you establish boundaries for future relationships? Well, taking that time to recharge as, as a, also an introvert myself, taking that time has taught me really what is what a boundary is. I honestly mm. didn't, I've heard the word, I've heard the word for years and years, but I really didn't ever enforce them. I never said no to anybody, whether that's my boss, I would always take on more work in my, uh, you know, in my marriage, I did not often say no. Um, I would say yes to dinners with friends when I was extremely exhausted. And I just, I didn't know how to enforce those. So spending that time really looking at what are my values? What are my values in life? What is important for me? What are my non-negotiables? So I'm not going to be compromising who I am in relation Relationships, you should compromise, give and take, absolutely, but not compromise your values and who you are as a person. So having that time allowed me to really establish what that was. Right, right. Do you find um, when you when you date, do you find it difficult to like be with somebody now, given like the the how like I guess self fulfilled you are? Do you find it more difficult to date now because of that? Like people, do people have a hard time understanding like the way that you kind of like what you kind of expect for, from other people and yourselves uh, and, and stuff like that? Is it harder to date now? I think it's actually easier because mm -hmm. now I know, I feel like I have just this, this group of these, these values, these feelings, these boundaries that I know that I'm not going to compromise. And mm -hmm. I, 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 my therapist actually told me she thinks I'm an oversharer. I share way too much in the beginning, <laughs> but I'm like, well, I'd just rather get it out there. So <laughs> I, I am, I'm very forthright about, you know, this is me. And I, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't want to try to hide that. I don't want to try, I want to be authentic with who I am. Mm -hmm. And for me, by putting that out there up front, I think it actually can, you know, weed out people. So you're not wasting, you know, months and months of your time in mm -hmm. a relationship because you're trying to put on a front that's not really you. Right, right. How would one, if you're in a relationship, how would you go about encouraging your partner to do similar exercises as you? Like say you, you're you doing your part to, I guess, um, fill your glass, right? And to date yourself. And if you feel that your partner should be doing something similar, perhaps, how do you approach them and, and say something like that? So I have, um, I've had a couple of clients that I've had them implement this into their relationships. And rather than the date night is the two of them, it's mm -hmm. the solo date night. And mm -hmm. so it's taking, and it doesn't have to be every week, again, depending on your circumstances, if you have children, it could be more challenging to do that, but really scheduling that time. And if it's on, you know, Thursday night, every other week is when I'm going to go spend an hour and do what I need to do for me. And that would be great for you to do that if you have that ability. And I know that, right. again, if you have children, it might be more challenging to do that. But it does need to be on both sides because that can create other issues. If that if there's only one person in the relationship who's working on their personal growth and fulfillment, which is 
ongoing forever and yeah. ever, um, mm-hmm. and the other person's not, you're going to see some, some situations. The other person might be resentful that they're spending all of this time without them as well. So it definitely needs to be two-sided. Right. And I'm actually, this is like the perfect segue because I was actually going to ask about children, right? A lot of people in my, uh, in my audience, um, you know, have children, you know, boys and girls that, you know, that are at that in my demographic, they're probably in their like early to early, mid, late teens, a lot of teenagers. Um, how can a parent go about explaining the importance of dating yourself to a teenager? That's um, such a great question because I was talking to my niece who is, she's 19 now, but recently Mm -hmm. about this because I think that children are exposed to self-care and these type of words more and more. I mean, I I don't think I ever heard the word self-care when I was in high school. (laughs) um, It's more mainstream (laughs) to talk about it now, but talking about that importance, especially at that age as teenagers, because they're excited to be in relationships and they want to spend all of their time with that new person in that relationship that they're in. But the absence does make the heart grow fonder. It Mm -hmm. really does. So having that alone time, um, you can teach them how important that is because they need to implement that, implement that into their lives at an early stage. So it becomes habit for forever. And I think that's why many people now, you know, in their thirties or their forties, it's hard to to go back and date yourself because we assume Mm. that it's selfish. We don't have the time. We don't want to put ourselves first and it's hard to break habits. It takes time. It does. It does that. You just nailed it, nailed it in the head right there. Absolutely. I I agree 110%. Uh, Cause that's, that is something that I would still to this day struggle with, you know, it's like how, how much of this is me being selfish, you know, and how much of this is actually something that I need to, you know, pursue and put a, a focus on because this is like an important thing, not just for me personally, but for future relationships that I'm in, you know, and things like that. Um, this is so this is the part of the interview where I get scared. OK, because this is where I, I put you on the spot to put me on the spot. Right. Okay. Um, I always uh, want I always challenge my guests to ask me any question that they want about the subject matter. Right. And and I have to answer it like there's no running away. Like, I just have to, like, just do it. Um, so right. I'm, I'm so you you currently have the power, my friend. You can mm-hmm. ask me anything that you want, and I have to answer it. This okay. is when I take a deep breath. Okay. Okay. Jasmine. I think I'm gonna make it. I think I'm gonna make it pretty easy on you. Um, oh, boring! I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, I didn't have anything prepared, but well, you you've already mentioned that you've done solo dates, which I think is amazing. Mm-hmm. You traveled by yourself and different things, so. What was the absolute best solo date experience that you have had? That's a fantastic question. The best one that I ever had, um, and I got to, I got to actually recreate it recently, um, uh, last year uh, in December 2016, I went on a solo trip to Los Angeles. I spent an entire week out there, uh, and it wasn't my first time out there, but it was my first time out there by myself. And I like I had such a grand time. I, I fell in love with the city, and um, I, I I just had a really really great time. And I went, um, I guess I, I, it was like six seven years not going back. And I'm like I need to go back. So this past, uh, I guess it was January. Was it January? Yeah, it was January. This past January, um, I went back and recreated that trip. Um, that I that I did in in Los Angeles, and it was just as good, if not better, you know. And I I those those solo adventures were really great because I was able to spend time on my own while still getting a fill of meeting new people, right? While still getting to go on adventures, um, while still being surrounded by people, you know, without having to like necessarily interact with them, but still just kind of like. You know, like you were mentioning before, people watch, like to be able to just, like, just sit, you know, at that at the beach, you know, Manhattan Beach, and just like sit and watch people do people things, <laughs> you know, like I really, really enjoyed that. And being able to just like ride around um, and, and just drive and just take in everything like I felt more grounded on those two trips. And I've done tons of solo trips, but those two trips specifically, I felt more grounded there than I have at any other point like honestly in my life it just it just hit hit the spot so like i would say my two trips my two solo trips to los angeles 
were the two trips that just will forever stand out to me for for sure. You you just gave me some hope because I have <laughs> this fear of repeating trips. So I feel like if it went amazing, if I go back, it's going to be crappy and I will yes. ruin my experience. And so you've given me hope because there are places I've wanted to travel to a second time, but yeah. I'm going to ruin that experience. So now I, I, have I totally get that because uh, I, I actually have this thing. I can't rewatch TV shows or movies. Once I've seen it once, I can't rewatch it, especially if I liked it. Cause I'm like, <laughs> no, what if I rewatch it? And I'm like, wow, this movie sucks. Like, like what if it like ruins that experience? So like, I just won't, I won't rewatch things unless it's like, unless I'm rewatching it with somebody to see what their reaction to it's going to okay. be. Right. But outside of that, I don't, I don't rewatch things. It's not often that like, I'll, I'll do things again, you know? So, so like, Yes, I, I'm really happy that it like worked out. And I think also the fact that some time had gone by, like like six, seven years is a long time, you know, yeah. and I was in a completely different, I wasn't even in my 30s yet, you know, when I when I had last went out there and, and now I'm 35 and, you know, like, I, like it was just like, a, I'm a different person now than I was back then. So it was kind of like, it was the same trip, but like a completely different perspective and a different point in my life. So uh, but it was still enjoyable. It was still very much enjoyable. I love that. I, I often say that you're not the same person today that you were five years ago or that you'll be in the next five years. And that's a you know perfect example of like you had a completely different experience in the exact same city. It's just it was completely yes. different. So again, you've given me hope. So I think I'm going to go back <laughs> to some of these places now. <laughs> yeah. And you know, like you can even add Denver onto the list because I, I was in Denver um, in December of this past year. I took a solo trip. I did a trip to Vegas. Uh, Denver and Salt Lake City, Utah. That was my little my little trio solo adventure. And I had been to Denver before, um, but at the time it was a, it's a little bit different because at the time the first time I went out there it was like height of COVID. It was July 2020, mm -hmm. and everything was shut down. <laughs> like everything, <laughs> yeah. nothing was happening. Like I just happened to meet a friend out there, and you know we just happened to live our best lives with what was out like available. But um, so I got to go back out there, you know, this past uh, December, and I had a, I had a really good time. So now I got to go back out again when it's not freaking cold as hell. I need to go. <laughs> it's, I'm yeah, not it's freezing my butt off. Beautiful here. Yes, yes, I need to go when it's not cold. So maybe maybe this summer. Maybe maybe. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Um, so my my last question for you uh, is 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 this, uh, Jasmine? There's going to be a lot of people that are listening to this or watching this right now that are you know listening to us talk about all of this and dating them, you know, dating ourselves and being like that sounds like a grand idea, but I don't know how to even start. I don't even know where to begin. Like this whole concept might be new to me, right? If there's somebody that's listening or watching right now that they're like, I want to date myself, but I don't know where to begin. What would you say to them? Well, they can download my freebie because I walk them there through that. Go. There we go. That's called a segue. That's called a segue setup. <laughs> I do. I, I have a freebie um, that you can download on my website. That is how to date yourself. 27 solo date ideas. And they're not, they're, they're not just like the typical, you know, go to dinner by yourself. So I throw in some fun ones in there. But um, I think an example of a really easy way to start that would be if you just, you know, want to read a book, a lot of people like, all right, I just want to sit down and read a book. That's that sounds very like, like a date night for myself. Well, take it to the next level. Don't buy the book on Amazon or on the Kindle, actually go to a bookstore and buy a book and maybe grab a coffee on your way home and then get home and drink your coffee and read your book. And so you've just changed that experience to be a little bit more personal. I love that. Cause I I'm, I'm a, I'm a physical book kind of person. Mm -hmm. Like I have my whole library of books over there that I just, I cherish, I cherish being able to flip a page. Like so I have nothing it. against, I have nothing against like eBooks. Cause I like Lord knows that I have plenty of those as well, but there's something about holding like an actual like book that just I'm right nothing, there with you. <laughs> nothing nothing will ever compare but um I love that and and I listen I I appreciate you um you know spilling this this tea this knowledge uh, about about dating yourself and anybody that's interested in um you know in Jasmine's book uh, that she's talking about if you're looking for some ideas I'm going to link to it in the description of this episode so all you have to do is just click on that get your copy just do it right now like I'll wait we'll sit here and wait for you you know <laughs> wait you know and then you go buy your copy and then you're going to enjoy it and like you're going to be able to find some cool ways that you can go about dating yourself and it's going to help you uh, not just on a personal level but you know it's going to help you with your current and or future relationships uh, as well so I know I'm going to I'm going to be doing 
doing that myself because I need I need some help. I need some help, Jasmine. I need some I need some tips and tricks. Yeah, lots of ideas. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. And uh, once again, I want to thank my uh, my guest, Jasmine Rice, for taking time out of her day to help us explore dating yourself, uh, dating yourself first. For more information about Jasmine, her practice, and how she can help people just like yourself, visit her official website at goodthingsaregonnacome.com. That is such a positive URL. Thank you. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Good things are going to come.com. That's going to be linked in the description as well. Uh, and on top of that, if you want even more exclusive Vibe with Kai content about mental wellness, be sure to subscribe to the Vibe with Kai on Patreon, Patreon uh, especially if you're into having like, these uh, insightful discussions surrounding mental health, mental wellness, good vibes, positive energy. Simply click on the link in the description of this episode and subscribe. It's only $1 per month. For $1, you get exclusive access to all bunch of stuff in my life including behind the scenes looks at my life that I don't post anywhere else. So if you're interested in that $1 a month, Vibe with Kai on Patreon, click the link. Uh, Jasmine, thank you again for, uh, for hanging out with me and hanging out with the Vibers here. And to all of you at home, thank you so much for watching and for listening. I'll catch you next time, Vibers. As always, my friends, much love, good vibes, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.